I'm at a gypsy. Uh, has it's crazy that Europe has never really gone the way of the facility kind of deal, and there's not like there's no Baker's Factory of or Club MX or like that sort of thing that's like a lot of pros kind of go to. It's very different in that sense, eh? Yeah, I was like, I was literally talking about that the other day um, to, uh, uh, yeah, like the team trainer and stuff here, obviously Mark. I said like, it's crazy how <laughs> how it hasn't kind of gone that way. It's literally, I see only Guy, so he's got his own facility now where he's got his built his own track and I think he's got like a house and garage there and everything like, so his practice mechanic, I think, lives there and he just rides out his garage and rides his track um so that's like more american style but um here i think the the difference with that though like because say in florida everyone has their like huge acreage block of land yeah. uh, like um machines all that shit you know and here in holland it'd be like almost impossible to find a bit of land like that to be able to build a track or a facility yeah without being next door to someone or or being super close to someone for them to complain and probably shut it down, you know. Um, I feel like that's the only thing that stops it from here because, I mean, like, I think Tim bought something in Slovenia. I'm pretty sure that's where he lives. Like, um, and I'm sure there's more land there than what there is in, yeah. like, Holland or Belgium. Yeah, that that's exactly sort of why, area. Yeah. Because it's, like, it's full city here that, like, you go to from one little city to another one it's like two kilometers away another five kilometers it's another little city there's obviously little bits of land in between but it's not also it's not big enough land to build like a sick facility or something it's like yeah so much small land unless you built it in the right place i mean i feel like that's the only way that's stopping it (laughs) i mean i see yeah i now i see like um france has like heap of sick tracks and stuff like that and like probably the right dirt for it but like yeah obviously no one would do it because you ne- you also need to um i feel like here people enjoy where they live as well and mm. say if one of the top guys had to go and buy land in france to do that they don't like to live in france so much unless they're from there um i feel like the people here are like real homebodies they like to stay serious like always at their house their home as soon as the gp finishes back at their house they're always home where like um they can't really build a home on the track kind of thing where like yeah. most people in florida they they live like what i've never been there or i see like they must live close to their facilities that they yeah, like, only like half an hour, all, yeah. ride all the time you know yeah. yeah so they drive only 30 minutes every day and they can go from like a city that has everything supermarket everything they need their own house straight to the track 30 minutes drive every day yeah um and i feel like if you bought like a setup here you're in you're in the middle of france with a lot of acreage you can like obviously build a house and shit there but there's nothing close so you can't really do anything where i feel like yeah they love the fact that everything's super close and easy here and like to be honest most of the tracks and shit around here are good anyway so i mean i feel like that's why they wouldn't want to go and build something themselves yeah it's that's um, how i see it anyway that's how that that makes total sense like it's just you've got too many people living in like it's a small country like if you look at you know you got yeah holland and then you've got belgium right there it's like then you got france and it's like that's it's a pretty small piece of land where a lot of people live so that just makes total sense but i guess too the the fact that it's like all the top guys like no one's got it so it's almost not a disadvantage yeah. because it's not like you yeah know, you've got one guy that's sort of how i guess you know tim's kind of got his setup um but yeah it's not yeah. like that in the sense where it's not like there's one trainer and then eight dudes riding with tim Mm. and then they're all at the same track on the same facility doing kind of like the same deal you know and then the i guess the other thing that probably that probably factors in is the fact that there's no supercross really in europe 
because all the motocross tracks are public so you can ride public motocross tracks yeah. there's no public supercross tracks so i guess that's probably where the facility stuff come in as well because they needed a place to build supercross tracks yeah 100 percent. i think that's also a reason why they would do it like imagine having a public supercross track that's just blown out every day you know <laughs> what i mean like if you can have so many riders it's like almost sketchy too to ride on a supercross track yeah 100 percent. say like 15 dudes on the same track and i mean it's like a 40 second lap time max sometimes so if you're riding with guys that are maybe three seconds a lap slower just because of the whoops or something like that you you're so uh at so much more risk of having like a stupid accident or something like that because of mm. someone else. So I feel like that's why they would do the the whole private track kind of thing. Like not to say that it's not the same like in in uh, uh, Europe where it's like quite sketchy that you can ride on this track with 85s and shit like that. <laughs> yeah. um, that's also sketchy, but I mean, it's... It's um, different on a 40 seconds. I don't know. I feel track. like, yeah, motocross. Yeah, motocross is also a different thing. Like you can look, I feel like so much further ahead and shit like that with motocross and like sort of kind of see what's happening a little bit more where like supercross you have to be so focused on where you're at the rhythm all that shit that you don't really get to check everything out so much um so I mean like I think that'd be the reason why they do it and plus like it'd be super expensive so of course that's why they do it all together um yeah. all the maintenance and shit like that would be like pretty pretty up there so like I mean, it's a good way of doing it. It's, um, yeah, you get like your own private facility kind of thing. You get to ride with good dudes. If you get like guys that are also willing to set up there and shit like that. So, I mean, like in the end of the day, it's probably a good time going to the track all the time, taking the piss and having yeah. a good time at the track and trying to learn off each other and shit like that. Especially like, I feel like that 83 compound was probably working pretty good because they have the the Lawrence boys there. They're on 250s. All the other guys yeah. are mainly 450 guys. So, um, yeah, that, that must be, like, a good time for all of them because, like, yeah, they're not worried as such about, like, the 250 guys. Like, even if they went there, yeah. the 250 guys could be faster. They don't really care so much because it's they're like, not racing them. yeah, I don't even have to race this guy on the weekend. You know, like it's good that he's fucking killing it today, but I don't have to go and put up with him on the weekend. Yeah, I, don't, I don't have it's to It's more like, it. it'd be more difficult at, at Baker's, I reckon, because they literally have to race each other week in, week out. Like, especially with the 250 yeah. guys there, they also have the 250 guys that are pushing the other 250 guys and the 450 guys that are pushing the 450 guys. So, I mean, I feel like in that sense that would be the hardest part about being there. Yeah, I think the I think the fact that none of the big guys have like done it too cuz really if you think about it in all sports it just takes like one top dude to do something different and then he wins and then yeah. everyone else has to do it. And it was kind of like Ricky exactly. and James were like the two guys that had the full kind of facility type deals. And then as soon as it mm -hmm. like that really took off and then Alden gets his facility and then it's like, cause that's, what's crazy is like, you think about it. It's not like the rider that's kind of dictating the training. It's like the trainer is like the main thing. And then you've just got riders that yep. cycle in and out of that program. But it's sort of like the trainer was the one that was kind of winning the championships. It was pretty, pretty wild time there. It, well i mean it still is kind of thing like i mean it's still like a, a pretty much like a what would you call that like a stigma of what's happening at the moment like yeah. say at the start ricky would buy the compound um james and then chad um they were like the top three guys um, yeah literally a eh? no one so could beat any of those three dudes that yeah exactly but now i mean like it's someone that's um I don't know, it's difficult to explain because it's now like someone that's got a facility that is a trainer, but they've got like five dudes. It's not like someone yeah. that just went and got one trainer, one facility, and then they're killing everyone. It's now uh, of one facility, one trainer, six guys. So yeah. it's like kind of weird, but at the same time, I can understand a little bit how it goes that way is because they... I feel like they have one top guy yeah. always 
and then they get like the other guys to push that one top guy. Um, mm. But yeah, I don't know exactly how it works or like what happens. I just see a little bit from like the outside in, you know, it's, uh, I've never like been to America or anything, never seen any of the facilities or something like that. So I don't really know what the goal is, but I feel like that's kind of what they do a little bit. Um, cause who have you got? You've got like, um, you've got Alden, obviously rat tray. Um, yep. star and has, I think like Mike Brown as well or not. Yeah. I think Mike Brown does like Mike the two fifties there. And then you've got at the star yeah. facility, you got like Garrett Swanepoel. That's, yep. that's like, that's yeah, the Swanee. next level is like a team that actually mm -hmm. owns the whole thing so like if you exactly. ride for star yeah. you've got practice tracks you've got supercross tracks you got uh suspension guys there motor guys like literally the entire thing is right there so that's that's the next level i think yeah i think that's the next step you know i think uh teams will most likely start doing that obviously uh kdm i've got alden you know what I mean? Like, yeah, KDM they sort of have group, it. Yeah. Uh, gas, gas. They, it's like, yeah, I think every, they would do all their testing at Alden's. They have all the suspension guys there. They would fly people in from Austria to there. Uh, just everything happens from there. So, I mean, like star do the exact same thing, but it's like kind of a different way of like, there's not a different brand there. Yeah. There's like, sort of like, not I mean, a, yeah, there's KDM not a and Husky party. and gas, gas, yeah, they're all the same, but it's like, I don't know, it's weird too because I feel like Gas Gas is like, they're, they're off, they just do their own thing kind of thing because like Barsha has got uh, Will Hahn and he yeah. like does his stuff with uh, also the 250 rider as well. But are they, they're they not in like, they're in California or not or are they, or are yeah, they in Florida yeah. as well? I think, um, well, Barsha's got his own place. that I'm pretty sure that's in, actually yeah. maybe he doesn't still have that. But yeah, he had like the whole the whole Bamland thing going. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I don't know. But I yeah, like yeah, I mean, it's a weird setup. So they do what they want to do kind of thing, which is like a cool way to have it too because I feel like in the end, they would nearly enjoy it a little bit more than yeah. the guys that are, that are at Alden's because I mean like say if you, you spend so much time with the same people that eventually one day you're going to get sick of them aren't you like especially yeah. with tensions always like as in riders i mean say like yeah you can always have a good relationship with riders but fuck they only have to do one thing to piss you off one time then you yeah yeah, yeah you fucking at them all the time you know to want to be faster it also pushes your limits it's means like quite a mental thing to stay there as well is like why i think say like people are kind of wanting to leave there at the moment or not like at yeah. the moment but they want to go out because i think um uh, it's not just like a physical thing it's like a real big mental thing for them to be just there 24 7 same yeah. guys same program yeah. you know you do the same thing as what he does you know he's a little bit faster here you know he's pushing your limit you know he can piss you off sometimes it only takes one thing to piss you off and then that one thing pisses you off 24 7 after that so yeah. i mean like for them it would be like a huge mental thing to stay there all the time as well um yeah. where i feel like some of the other guys have got like a little bit of freedom because like say star they have the same thing but they also have like six 250 guys or or seven 250 guys also the amateur guys that are coming up they can also train there they have the 450 guys that pretty much like I feel like them 450 guys, they also use that facility, but they have their own thing. Like, I don't think Tomac yeah. trains with nah, Tomac. I think he does the time. 250 side of things and that's it. Yeah. So, like, also, Ferrandez, I don't know if he uses uh, Swanapol or not, but, like, nah, they all have DV. that facility. Yeah, okay. So, like, I mean, them guys still have the exact same setup, but a little bit more freedom. I feel like yep. they'd enjoy it a little bit more um, on that side of things because, like, Dylan and... Eli they could probably choose whether they want to ride together or ride with the 250 guys and they enjoy that enough or it, yeah say Eli he just goes back to Colorado for whatever amount of time then Dylan's still got someone to ride with 
but he can also do his own program that DV set out for him. So it's like he's not put to one exact thing that everyone has to do. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, like, that's kind of a little bit the way I look at it, where he would have like more freedom in what he does and a little bit more enjoyment. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.